Supplemental Tablet 14 We are told the Earth is a portal with access to Heaven, guarded by Dark Lords known to the Dwellers here long ago. The portal was hidden by the Dark Lords to prevent access to Heaven, Niburu, and Arulu, which appears to be the spherical boundary limits for Lightborn Man's travel, Oobs. We are coached that we must be cleansed of darkness in order to use the portals of light. Man of the future, now, will deny the mysterious information, but the Seeker will find the way. Admonishments are given to not cast his pearls of wisdom to the untested, so that the pure are not corrupted and the truth may prevail. Do what is described as a space composed of two regions that exist between the Earth and the Great One, creator of all, Dimension. Duat is considered home of the powers of illusion, house of the gods located at Seket Hepset, within the Duat. This appears to be two higher dimensions from our own, accounting for three occupied of the nine declared worlds within worlds, previously cited by Thoth. Osiris's role is disclosed as the guard of the portal, Urs, that turns back the souls of unworthy men. Arulu, a place where the Great Ones have passed, is mentioned as being accessed from the Earth prison portal if one can get by Osiris the Gate Guard. Thoth declares, when he has completed his mission of awakening humans, that he will join his ancestors, the Great Ones, in his ancient home in the House of the Gods. Arulu is discussed as having the heaven-born powers. This is also the location where Thoth entered the gates of the Netherworld, controlled by Nergal, according to my genealogy table, or with her rescue girl as his spouse to save his mother. This is consistent. The writer states that the mighty or great ones on Arulu have seven mansions, with three guards each against dark forces. The two dimensions in the Duat that separate Earth from Arulu has fifteen access points or openings. Not to be outdone, the Lords of Illusion have twelve unique houses oriented in different directions. It is claimed there are 42 judges of the dead in Arulu, controlling access to Earth, seeking to leave the portal to the Duop that Iris Osiris guards. We are told that four of the judges are the sons of Horus, and that Isis has two guards oriented east and west. She garners a new name, Queen of the Moon, to add to her AK list. A very significant key to the mysteries is provided regarding energy differentiated into two types, Ba and Ka. Ba is the eternal essence, and Ka is the illusion of matter that man knows as life. After a human being is incarnated, living according to Ka, then Ba is infused. Ba is the hidden soul connection back to the source of all. This hidden connection is our birthright, providing the key to the portal to the sacred land, separated by what appears to be two dimensions described as the Duat. Thus we here on Earth are living a third dimensional reality with two additional dimensions to get home to one of the Great Ones, a soul repository being located there. Three universal principles attributed to God are disclosed. These are the equilibrium that comprise the source of creation. Number one, one God is the source of all life. Number two, one truth is the source of all good. And number three, one point of freedom is the source of all power. This information most certainly is the source of the special nature of the number three. This is the first use of the term God versus the other terms used. Note that the trident has three prongs. Is this a coincidence given the fact that Poseidon founded Atlantis and was dwelling in his temple there, his symbol being the trident? The three qualities of God in his light home are infinite power, infinite wisdom, and infinite love. Masters Ascended are given three powers, to transmute evil, assist good, and use discrimination. And the three powers that create all things, divine love possessed of perfect knowledge, divine wisdom knowing all possible means, and divine power possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. We are told there are three states or circles of existence. The circle of light, where only God dwells, the circle of chaos, where all things by nature arise from death. That's the Ka. And the third one is the circle of awareness, where all things spring from life. The Ba. Three are the paths of the soul. Man, Ka, and the circle of chaos. Liberty, Ba, and the potential ascension. Light, access to Arulu, heaven if found worthy. Three are the impediments to ascension. No motivation to obtain knowledge. Atheistic beliefs about God. Not sure why God is lowercase here. 
And number three, attachment to evil. We are warned that even though light-born man may make it past Osiris guarding the earth portal to the Duat, proceeding to the sphere of Arulu, heaven as being their sacred land, more tests await. If found unworthy, it is better to have been consumed by fire than waste the trip and their time evaluating your soul. The next portion of the supplemental tablet is addressed to those who are liberated, meaning that the Ba is active, aware, and of potentially living beyond the illusion of Ka. The chronology indicates that, that the dweller in ancient Atlantis, Enki, existed prior to the creation of man 220,000 years ago. The dweller has the power to issue the key to the earth portal for ascending souls. The dweller is described to be the Holy One enthroned in the flower of fire, life, that eventually was taken by Thoth to the land of Egypt, Chem, and was placed in the great halls of Amenti. An additional clue as to the identity of the dweller in Atlantis is provided, indicating that his countenance was so bright that it had to be veiled in order that the visitor's soul would not shatter from the glory emanated. Wow. The flower of life symbol has a very special meaning to sacred geometry researchers and is the source of the two-volume series, The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, reference 32 through 33, described in the bibliography and authored by Drumbella Melchizedek. I attended a sacred geometry workshop based on this work in 2004, after having read volumes 1 and 2 and having spent significant time assimilating Drunvalo's work. I now understand why Thoth was cited as the being that imparted much of the wisdom taught in the weekend seminar. Profoundly unveiling of the ancient mysteries was in print for all to see. Fundamental to Drunvalo's teaching is the activation of the Ba and the Ka energy, which I now equate to the Merkaba meditation, whose name contains both the Ka and the Ba energies, mentioned in this supplemental tablet, number 32, chapter 13. Drunvalo provides his understanding of the place where energy meets matter to us, as detailed below. Number one, chakra energy feeds the chi in the body's meridians down to the cellular level. Number two, prana energy field is close to the body and arises. This is what the PIP and RFI instrumentation are able to depict, which I describe in my first book. Number three, auric field. It's a spherical egg-shaped energy emanating from thoughts and emotions reaching out about two feet. Later in the 14th tablet, a near cinematic unveiling occurs. The Atlantis dweller, with his countenance dampened for Thoth's safety, morphs out of another dimension, from Arulu, with fire, spirits of heaven, wonder of wonders, and clouds materializing into the world of man. The palace is described as starry, and another name is ascribed to the dweller of Atlantis, that of the Holy One. This reminds me of the scene in the Immortals, where Hades appears among the populace in the film, complete with clouds, smoke, and fire. A demonstration of the first cause is initiated by the dweller, causing energy to infuse Thoth's body. This light is termed the Sun Spirit, the sovereign of the Sun Spheres. This appears to be the Ba energy, which permits ascension from the Earth Portal to Arulu, home of the ancient gods and the god of all gods, God. Thus the dweller gave Thoth the word to say to open the portal, but first he had to take a tour for his edification. Next, Thoth is transported via the space-time to see Arulu, learning the secrets of the cosmos. Primeval chaos is witnessed on Arulu, noting that is why guards are necessary to watch over God's creation, keeping destruction at bay. Eight of those permitted to ascend from Earth via the portal were encountered in a splendor of light on Arulu. After his tour of the great God's abode, Thoth returns his body on Earth. It is at this point that Thoth renounces his birthright to return to Arulu, choosing instead to remain on Earth helping mankind until the Age of Darkness has elapsed. This could very well be the same story in which Thoth Nishida accompanies the Adam to Nibiru to meet Anu. As pointed out in my research, the Anunnaki were limiting their rulership term by zodiacal house division. The Age of Darkness most likely is referring to the Age of Pisces, which was a negative polarity house, alternating each sign from positive to negative. Thoth returns to the Halls of Amente after receiving instructions from the Dweller as to how the sacred knowledge is to be used, symbolized, and guarded. A very profound statement is made about the precondition necessary to ascend, 
in which Thoth advises that if one has passed all the trials of the outer to summon him with the key, Ba, light spirit, that you possess, implying that when out of the body access to the halls of Amenti is possible. Thoth promises the words of power to the initiate, calling himself the initiator. A warning is issued to the potential traveler to the halls of Amenti. Calling on Thoth when not seeking wisdom, having an impure heart, or being will willed in purpose may revoke portal access permanently. List ye, O man, to the deep hidden wisdom, lost to the world since the time of the dwellers, lost and forgotten by men of this age. Know ye this earth is but a portal, guarded by powers unknown to man, yet the dark lords hide the entrance that leads to the heavens born land. Know ye the way to the sphere of Orulu, is guarded by barriers open only to light born man. Upon earth I am the holder of the keys to the gates of the sacred land. Command I, by the powers beyond me, to leave the keys to the world of man. Before I depart, I give you the secrets of how ye may rise from the bondage of darkness, cast off the fetters of flesh that have bound ye, rise from the darkness into the light. Know ye the soul must be cleansed of its darkness, ere ye may enter the portals of light. Thus I established among ye the mysteries, so that the secrets may always be found. I, though man may fall into darkness, always the light will shine as a guide. Hidden in darkness, veiled in symbols, always the way to the portal will be found. Man in the future will deny the mysteries, but always the way the seeker will find. Now I command ye to maintain my secrets, giving only to those ye have tested so that the pure may not be corrupted, so the power of truth may prevail. List ye now to the unveiling of mystery, list to the symbols of mystery I give. Make of it a religion, for only thus will its essence remain. Regions there are, two between, this life and the great one, traveled by the souls who depart from this earth. Duat, the home of the powers of illusion, Sekep Hestep, the house of the gods. Osiris, the symbol of the guard of the portal, who turns back the souls of unworthy men. Beyond lies the fears of the heaven-born powers, Arulu, the land where the great ones have passed. There, when my work among men has finished, will I join the great ones of my ancient home. Seven are the mansions of the house of the mighty. Three guards the portal of each house from the darkness. Fifteen the ways that lead to Duat. Twelve are the houses of the lords of illusion, facing four ways, each of them different. Forty and two are the great powers, judging the dead who seek for the portal. Four are the sons of Horus, two are the guards of east and west of Isis, the mother who pleads for her children, queen of the moon reflecting the sun. Ba is the essence, living forever. Ka is the shadow that man knows as life. Ba cometh not until Ka is incarnate. These are the mysteries to preserve through the ages. Keys are they of life and death. Hear ye now the mystery of mysteries. Learn of the circle beginningless and endless. The form of he who is one and in all. Listen and hear it, and go forth and apply it. Thus will ye travel the way that I go. Mystery and mystery, yet clear to the light-born. The secret of all now I will reveal. I will declare a secret to the initiated but let the door be wholly shut against the profane. Three is the mystery come from the Great One. Here and light on thee will dawn. In the primeval dwell three unities. Other than these none can exist. These are the equilibrium, source of creation, one God, one truth, one point of freedom. Three come forth from the three of the balance, all life, all good, all power. Three are the qualities of God in his light home infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite love. Three are the powers given to the masters to transmute evil, assist good, use discrimination. Three are the things inevitable for God to perform, manifest power, wisdom, and love. Three are the powers creating all things, divine love possessed of perfect knowledge, divine wisdom knowing all possible means, divine power possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. Three are the circles, states of existence, the circle of light where dwells nothing but God, and only God can traverse it, 
the circle of chaos where all things by nature arise from death, the circle of awareness where all things spring from life. All things animate are three states of existence, chaos or death, liberty and humanity, and felicity of heaven. Three necessities control all things, beginning in the great deep, the circle of chaos, plenitude in heaven. Three are the paths of the soul, man, liberty, light. Three are the hindrances, lack of endeavor to obtain knowledge, non-attachment to God, attachment to evil. In man the three are manifest, three are the kings of power within, three are the chambers of the mysteries found yet not in the body of man. Hear ye now of who is liberated, freed from the bondage of life into light. Knowing the source of all worlds shall be open, I even the gates of Rulu shall not be barred. Yet heed, O man, who would enter heaven, if ye be not worthy, better it be to fall into the fire. Know ye the celestials pass through the pure flames, at every revolution of the heavens they bathe in the fountains of light. List ye, O man, to this mystery. Long in the past before ye were man born, I dwelled in ancient Atlantis, there in the temple I drank of the wisdom, poured as a fountain of light from the dweller. Give the key to ascend to the presence of light in the great world. Stood I before the Holy One, enthroned in the flower of fire. Veiled was he by the lightning of darkness, else my soul by the glory have been shattered. Forth from the feet of his throne like the diamond, rolled forth four rivers of flame from his footstool, rolled through the channels of clouds to the man-world. Filled was the hall with spirits of heaven. Wonder of wonders was the starry palace. Above the sky, like a rainbow of fire and sunlight, were formed the spirits. Sang they the glories of the Holy One. Then from the midst of the fire came a voice. Behold the glory of the first cause. I beheld that light, high above all darkness, reflected in my own being. I attained, as it were, to the God of all gods, the Spirit Son, the Sovereign of the sun's spheres. There is one, even the first, who hath no beginning, who hath no end, who hath made all things, who govern all, who is good, who is just, who illuminates, who sustains. Then from the throne there poured a great radiance, surrounding and lifting my soul by its power. Swiftly I moved through the spaces of heaven. Shown was I the mysteries of mysteries, shown the secret heart of the cosmos. Carried was I to the land of Arulu, stood before the lords in their houses. Opened they the doorway so I might glimpse the primeval chaos. Shuddered my soul to the vision of horror, shrank back my soul from the ocean of darkness. Then saw I the need for the barriers, saw the need for the lords of Arulu. Only they, with their infinite balance, could stand in the way of the impouring chaos. Only they could guard God's creation. Then did I pass around the circle of eight, saw all the souls who had conquered the darkness, saw the splendor of light where they dwelled. Longed I to take my place in their circle, but longed I also for the way I had chosen. When I stood in the halls of Amenti and made my choice to the work I would do. Passed I from the halls of Arulu down to the earth space where my body lay. Arose I from the earth where I rested, stood I before the dweller. Gave my pledge to renounce my great right until my work on earth was completed, until the age of darkness be past. List ye, O man, to the words I shall give ye. In them shall ye find the essence of life. Before I return to the halls of Amenti, Taught shall ye be the secrets of secrets, how ye too may arise to the light. Preserve them and guard them, hide them in symbols, so the profane will laugh and renounce. In every land form ye the mysteries, make the way hard for the seeker to tread. Thus will the weak and the wavering be rejected, thus will the secrets be hidden and guarded, held till the time when the wheel shall be turned. Through the dark ages, waiting and watching, my spirit shall remain in the deep hidden land. When one has passed all the trials of the outer, summon ye me by the key that ye hold. Then will I, the initiator, answer, 
come from the halls of the great gods in Amenti. Then will I receive the initiate, give him the words of power. Hark ye, remember these words of warning. Bring not to me one lacking in wisdom. Impure in heart or weak in his purpose, else I will withdraw from ye your power to summon me from the place of my sleeping. Now go ye forth and summon thy brothers, so that I may impart the wisdom to light thy path when my presence is gone. Come to the chamber beneath my temple. Eat not food until three days are past. There will I give ye the essence of wisdom, so that with power ye may shine amongst men. There will I give unto thee the secrets, so that ye too may rise to the heavens. God men in truth, as in essence ye be, depart now and leave me while I summon those ye know of, but as yet not know.